this is what happens. It's night six of Midnight Madness, and it starts to wear on you. When you talk to the the PR people about the Midnight Madness or about TIFF, everything's sunshine and happiness, and everybody's just so happy, and we're happy, because all these movies are so good, and we get to see these movies that nobody else has seen, all these world premieres, and we saw Super before anybody saw Super, and then it got bought, so we're all so happy for everybody, and that means Midnight Madness is a great thing, but what nobody talks about it is the toll it takes on you. The worst thing is that it, it really messes up your, your colon. It's the colon that bears the brunt, really, because you turn turns you into a, some kind of teenager. It's 2.30 in the morning, and I am gooned on horror movie and coffee. And then you think, well, I better go get some kind of big burrito or something. And then you have to skip your screening of a Werner Herzog movie. Because you have basically have a turd hurricane, turdicane, a turd NATO. popular for the last few years. What we want to do now is we want to come back out with uh, another scary film, but something that is unique at the same time. We want to make a movie that is, um, once again, a loving homage to all the films that we all grew up with. What are you expecting was, to see with these you know, like, I'm like, expecting like, to see this. <laughs> I like horror movies, but I like them in the comfort of my own home where I can leave the room if I get scared. So we always try to kind of sit on the aisle so that if I get really scared, I can leave because I'm not really good at dealing with it in public. It should be fun. I'm a screamer. I'm the kind of person that will scream in the middle of a movie. So it's like a masochistic thing. Like it's fun to be terrified. Right. Our thing is, it's really hard for us to find a film that's genuinely scary. I had a list of rules tacked to the desk when I was writing this. No bullshit fake scares. That's where like uh, someone's in the car and then bang, bang, bang. And it's just a friend giving back the credit card. You forgot your car. <laughs> We wanted to make something that's actually scary. The Exorcist, The Shining, Poltergeist. So we decided to um, make a movie that is a haunted house film, or rather it starts out as a haunted house movie, and then it degenerates into something completely different. Okay, we only have, uh, we only have 33 minutes left on this tape, so... So keep it short? Let's keep it short. I feel bad about the intro, the preamble that I gave earlier in this video about the gastrointestinal problems I was having. I made a promise to myself after Bunraku when I was in the presence of a truly ethereal, ageless being named Gaktusan. I don't think he would ever talk on camera about a turd cano in his stomach. I think he would have just comported himself with otherworldly grace, and I wish that's something that I had done instead. The reason he wouldn't talk about stuff like that is because he doesn't even have a stomach, probably. So we saw a film directed by James Wan, who's the creator of the original Saw uh, film, and this movie, although in a different genre, had a lot to do with the first Saw film, in that it had a bunch of moments for me that were really deeply scary and really cool, and a bunch of moments that were incredibly dumb. They described it, the screenwriter and the director, as this generation's version of Poltergeist. I think that's reaching. <coughs> it's very similar. It's not made with the same panache. It's much more on the nose. I'm kind of totally willing to buy the cheesy elements in this film. They were really setting this movie up to be something truly shocking, something really scary, and I was bracing myself for that because as previously established, I'm a coward. I'm scared by things that are scary, uh, but I, I think I laughed out loud at 
things that were maybe unintentionally funny more often than I was like jumping out of my seat because something came around the corner. And I, th I just feel like it could have been way more successful if they embraced the cheesiness even more. As it was, it sort of, I don't know, the music was a little over the top and non-stop too. And then towards the end there was one scene where there was no music and then it, things got tense for me and like things yeah. got creepy. It's like, guys, just don't, don't have a cello playing in every single scene and then have synthesizers playing in the next scene. It's cold, I gotta go. Go. See you tomorrow night for the sexy, we're gonna have to talk sexy talk. Sexy scary. Sexy scary. Red nights. <laughs> <laughs>